Okay, I think we're live, everybody. Hello, my name is Beth Pratt, and I'm the California Regional Executive Director for the National Wildlife Federation and also leader of the Save LA Cougars campaign. And welcome to Cougars in Crossing Week. This uh, Today's session is part of this greater week, and we've been having a lot of fun. Uh, just wonderful offerings. You can check out on P22's Facebook event or SaveLACougars.org the schedule of events uh, this week. Yesterday, uh, Stella Merritt, thank you, ran, uh, or it was Monday, I can't remember at this point, but um, a wonderful uh, shamanistic event uh, for mountain lions. Um, we've had it raised $250. Um, we have had uh, the kickoff last week. There's a whole bunch going on. You got Break the Poison Chain on Thursday, uh, Reading with a Ranger, and then it all uh, um, ends up with a wonderful open house. It, actually, one of the um, few in-person events uh, on Sunday at King Gillette Ranch from 1 to 4.30. And by the way, if you're tuning in from the Santa Monica Mountains or nearby area, uh, King Gillette Ranch Visitor Center run by the National Park Service has a really cool new exhibit, a uh, small one on the wildlife crossing with a model of the crossing and what it'll look like. So you can check that out at any time. But here we are, part of Cougars and Crossing Week. And uh, we're here to tell you about a really special project. Um, we are building a wildlife crossing, yes, but just as important to me in my organization and our team is that we are also being inclusive and in, in connecting people and empowering people to wildlife and respecting that there are different connections than ours. So the connectivity is not just about connecting wildlife across roads, it's about connecting people in different places to wildlife and them connecting us. And one of those uh, connections is with empowering voices like Warren Dixon, who's on here, and Jonathan Martinez, who we hope was going to be on here to talk about his mural, but he's having <laughs> internet issues. So we will do something with him in the future. But we're going to talk about him and talk about his work. But yeah, I want yeah. um, the other two guests I have here to introduce themselves, and then we'll sort of get into it. But today we're really talking about how art can connect people <laughs> and how part of the Save LA Cougars campaign is empowering artists to share their art and their stories around P22 and other wildlife. So uh, before we get into that, just let me pass it off to uh, Nadia to introduce yourself and Warren, and then we're going to we're gonna talk about art and what we're doing around it. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Beth. Um, so hello, everybody. It's so great to um, be on this um, awesome conversation with two people that I've uh, come to know more and more every day. My, uh, my name is Nadia Gonzalez, and I've been working with um, the Save uh, LA Cougars campaign for about three years now, uh, mostly focused on helping to tell the story of the crossing to the media. Um, and um, over the last year or so, was very excited to be able to support the team in um, helping um, them to connect with, like Beth mentioned, artists. Um, and it, for me, it happened a little bit serendipitous, serendipitously, and we'll get into that a little bit um, later, but I'll kick it over to Warren so he can share a little bit about himself as well. Thank you, Nadia, and thank you, Beth. Um, but Beth and Nadia, to me, they're, they're friends now. So it started off business or, or you know, just as a, a connection through business, but I feel like we're all friends. Um, so I'm Warren Dixon, um, co-owner of Third Rock Hip Hop. I'm from Watts, California. Um, the goal um, that I see when I'm when I'm working with people like Beth and Nadia is to bridge a, a, a gap or cross a divide between two communities and um, just show people more relatability with human life and wildlife and even just inner city people and the everyday lifestyle and struggles with the everyday lifestyles and struggles of um, nature and wildlife. Yep. And yeah, Warren, let's get to how, you know, we got engaged. And you're right, Warren's kind of like a, 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 you know, a brother to me and, and, he, and such a good friend. But yeah. beyond that, he's also helped me uh, do my work better and also see a different perspective about wildlife. And I met uh, Warren, yeah. you know, we have our annual P22 Day events. And uh, at the second annual one, I met Warren. And that's mm -hmm. how... You know, I just really became um, 
just so enamored about how you approach this work, Warren, but also about your perspective about wildlife. It, it changed how I saw it and how you related it to, um, you know, that the cause of oppression for people um, can is Absolutely. pretty similar, like to P22 and wildlife. And you introduced me to the Watts community, of which I love being a mm -hmm. part of. And from all this came our commitment, NWF, that, you know, again, we're building this crossing, but we also want to build bridges with the Watts community and show people what an incredibly vibrant, awesome place it is, demystify it. And that's Absolutely. through art and through your art, whether it be music. Um, but can you, you know, can you talk a little bit about where the idea for like the mural came from uh, for you and, and the mm. other things we've been doing together uh, in Watts? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it all stems from, you know, an artistic side that I have as well, because um, because I'm in music, you know, I think in a metaphor, I think in, you know, I think relatability all the time. I'm always trying to find relatability and um, commonality. So with that, um, that's how I started to just really pay attention to where we were alike when it came to wildlife and how we can bridge this gap. So the mural, the mural came because, you know, the community, they were talking to us about, you know, one inspiration, wanting to see more things that, that represented beauty and, and a brighter side of life for them as they, you know, make their rounds through this community every day. They don't get a lot of inspiration. So, um, you know, us just knowing what inspired us. Like, you know, we heard them talking about butterflies because they don't really, in their mind, they haven't been seeing butterflies, you know? But they was like, you know, maybe like some butterflies, something that means, you know, life. And, and you know, I know what they mean when they, when they say that because it started to inspire me the more that I was getting around nature. So I was like, yo, yo, Beth, we have to do this for this community, you know? And um, of course, Beth understood right away. <laughs> Beth, is, Beth is really like somebody that is like a part of Watson now, but she, it's almost like she was like, she just hopped right in and, and understood the people and related to the people and conversated with the people like she grew up there. So, yeah, Beth was like, man, let's do it. And ever since the community, you can feel the difference. You can feel the appreciation. Um, there's people that sometimes just walk a different route um, to get to where they're going so that they can pass by the mural. You know, so. And it's in a really, I mean, it's in a really high trafficked area. But, mm -hmm. and, and listen, is. I'm honored to be a part of the, you know, Watts community. And it's, it, again, forget all the myths you've heard. It is such a vibrant, wonderful community. Um, mm -hmm. And I think like, you know, this mural is just, you know, like you said, bringing some more inspiration to it, but you know, Absolutely. P22 is on the mural Warren. And, and I, I think the yeah. other thing that really to me resonated really powerful with me and I know with you, you know, he's there because yeah, he's a mountain lion and he's pretty and the butterflies, but uh, represent yeah. something, but P22 represents something to you in the community too. And I think the way you relate his oppression to sort yeah. of the larger issue, can you talk a little bit about that? Cause that was another reason yeah. P22 is on this mural. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you think about the journey that he made, right. So we all know that it was a, it was a the great journey in a way. And he was, he was more lucky than anything. It's not like it was something, a system that was set up for him to win. You know, it was actually major obstacles in a way. And the road systems that, that were built was a major obstacle, just like it has been for a lot of large animals and wildlife. So in our communities, road systems, freeway paths, these, these things were built in the middle of communities and cause like forced displacement. And these things actually made it hard for these communities to thrive, right? But still we're making our way and we're, we're taking um, steps to, to make our lives better, but it really did cause a disruption in these communities. And a lot of people don't know, like even when you see protesters occupy the, the streets and things like that, 
that's where it started. It started because they were occupying the streets that they built to break up these communities. So, you know, P22 being on the mural and these butterflies being on the mural is really just a reflection of the people. So when they see that and they see and they hear about the journey that he made, it's like, yeah, we making that same journey. And if you know Nadi, I'm sure you guys seen this before. Black people, man, when we see each other, we don't even have to say many words, right? But if I see you somewhere that I don't expect to see someone like me, like, I could just see you and just be like, all right now. Right? All right now. If, all right now means how's it going? Good to see you. How's the family doing? Keep doing whatever you're doing. And um, you know what I mean? Like, thank you for providing comfort for me to know that I belong here. So it means all of that in one. So in a way, when they pass by and they see P-22 on that wall, and they see these butterflies on the wall, you know, you get that same feeling like, all right now, mm-hmm. we, on, we on the same journey. I see. Right. So and it, it got me to see the wildlife crossing in a different way. Like you said, P-22 is one of the lucky ones. He, he, there's a system of oppression for wildlife that prevents them mm-hmm. from you know, most of them die trying to cross the road. He was yeah. lucky and he got out, but we're building the crossing because we can't rely on luck. And it's the same thing with dismantling systems of oppression for people. We can't rely on the mm-hmm. luck, right? And no. and I think that's what we work towards as well. Um, you know, we mm-hmm. want to get to uh, the mur- a little more about the mural and the artist. And we're so sorry, Jonathan uh, couldn't dial in. But can you, uh, Warren, let's talk a little bit about before we go to Nadia. Um, also, some of the other things we've done in Watts that have to do with art, which is um, the first mm-hmm. wild. We've done two wildlife to Watts events. One was scaled back um, because of COVID, but you know it's something we are committed to for the long haul. So, do you want to talk a little bit about wildlife to Watts as well? Oh, absolutely. So, wildlife to Watts is 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 more of an experience for these um, kids that come out and show up. Even the, even the parents actually. So a lot of them, they don't really get a chance to really interact with wildlife. To actually, um, like I said, experience them is, instead of just learning about them on page, learning about them through video, and um, getting a chance to create that comfort, which is a, a major, a major part of um, understanding and and you know wanting to be involved that we can evolve um they needed to create a comfort with wildlife so Mm -hmm. some of them won't get a chance to go out hiking some of them don't even know that these hiking trails exist where you can see wildlife so we was like you know what you know let's do something special and just meet them where they are let's bring wildlife experience to the people and um, so far, the community received it in a way that has been amazing, even better than I think we expected. For the first, like, even the first year, like, we didn't expect the love to be, you know, just, like, so much of it. We didn't expect that. We thought it may be a little bit of, like, hold on, what is this? But everybody was involved. Like, we had old people, young people that were... Like, they all felt the same age. The yep. old people felt like the young people, you know, because this was their first time getting a chance to experience it. And they're asking about it. They're asking, when is the next one? They want to bring, you know, more family. They want to see how, you know, where it's going to go go next. So, yeah, the community loves wildlife to watch and I just yep. many times as we can bring it there, the people are gonna keep showing up. It is. It's it's the best event I've been to. It was just so so wonderful. And just walking around Watts with with to, you know, <laughs> Toby the tortoise with Dana. It was, tortoise. it was yeah, it was really great. So yeah, I look forward to many more. Yeah. Um Absolutely. But, you know, so too, you know, uh, you know, Warren's art is really music and song. And at the end we'll if we have time, we'll talk a little bit about if I was wild, mm-hmm. but um 
you know, let's get to the back back to this mural as part of Watts. And also, um, it's not just as far as our work, actually, uh, Jonathan Martinez, this artist, um, again, we're so sorry, can't be here. Well, again, we'll have him back. Um, he's doing more than just one mural, but here's the Watts mural you can see, which is just beautiful. And we, um, you know, part of doing this was um, giving the Watts community the choice. What do you want on the mural? And, you know, it was, I love how it's butterflies and P22. Both the animals that are having problems with movement, right? Um, mm -hmm. Both mountain lions mm -hmm. in the Santa Monica Mountains and monarch butterflies are having issues, uh, you know, with movement and, and survival. But Absolutely. this artist we were connected to through Nadia. Nadia, do you want to talk a little bit about what led you to reaching out to Jonathan? And, you know, the rest, they say, is history. But how did this come about, Nadia? Um, yeah, it was, it's still... Um, I was thinking about what I was going to share this morning on, on this um, opportunity. And I just was thinking to myself, like, should I give them the whole story? And, um, and I thought I had to, because it just goes to show how, um, you know, we're all, you know, the journey that we're all on it, it there is a purpose behind it. And um, sometimes we're moving so fast, we're not paying attention to those uh, little signs, if you will, along the way that's that kind of, you know, that kind of are there to affirm that you're on the right path. And I think uh, running into Jonathan and then all of the things that have happened since and what's still to come, right? Um, because we're we're still sort of, I feel like they're in the very early stages of what we can do now that we've got this other relationship and this other layer of what's happening in Watts. But um, I found Jonathan through Instagram, of course, you know, um, I can't take I can't take more credit than that. But um, I found him on an Instagram post um, that where he was working on a mural um, uh, for a friend of mine who I met when I was like 15 years old. So like 20 years ago, I you know, where, you know, my career path was I mean, I was just a kid in high school, right? I was uh, working a summer job and at a pool teaching kids how to swim. And there was a young lady who uh, and her sister who I worked there with, um, who I've known and I, she sort of has become family to me at this point, 20 year plus years later. Um, her and her husband hired Jonathan to paint a mural and I, you know, scrolling through my feed, um, saw him um, in process on this mural. And I immediately, as soon as I went on his feed and I realized that he um, was art of the endangered and that that this was what he did, that, you know, his passion was creating art, you know, pieces, mixed media or even large scale pieces that were focused on um, wildlife and endangered species, I immediately thought, oh my God, we have to, I have to invite this, this kid. I have to connect him with Beth. And of course, Beth, you, you, I know you think that uh, it's not really necessarily you, but um, so many people, uh, so many organizations out there really kind of are not doing as much of this work as, as they should. And I think there's a lot, you know, you're to be commended and recognized for, um, all, you know, being open to those new connections. And so I, I wasn't shy about it. I was like, Jonathan, meet Beth, Beth, meet Jonathan. <laughs> and then, and then it went from there, but kind of going back to what I was talking about, it's crazy to me how 20 years ago I met this person. And then all these years later, I'm in a position where I can connect that person through an, to a, a, you know, to one of the most important conservation projects in the history of California, probably. And um, now he's a part of something and it's, and it's so authentic too, right? Because he's from, he's from the LA area. He's, you know, first generation Mexican American. And um, it's just, it, it, it just feels great to have, you know, LA so well represented in so many ways, whether it's through Warren and the, the music and, you know, and the, and the black community in Watts and, you know, someone like Jonathan, who's, been doing this work for a while and we just made the connection so i just can't say anything like i said i i and i've this has happened to me before with this project specifically so it's just so exciting um 
Jonathan, uh, and, and I'm just excited for, for what's to come. Cause like I said, I feel like we're just getting started. We are just getting started. I think with all these partnerships, whether it be with Warren or Jonathan and, you know, you're right, Nadia, it is a different approach to work. And as you know, um, not everybody gets it, but for me, it's, this campaign has been about, yeah, we have a, a crossing we need to be built, but it's also about empowering other voices. And I think, you know, Warren and Jonathan are two of those, mm -hmm. like, wow, we have these great talents. Let's hear about their perspective on wildlife, right? It's not all about, you know, we, we need this wonderful diversity of voices. And mm -hmm. when you introduced me to Jonathan, I mean, you know, it was a lot like Warren. He just had me at hello, like, wow, look at this incredible body of work. And, you know, the way he relates to wildlife is very different than I do, but that makes it, you know, I mean, it, it's no less worthy. In fact, probably more, right? I mean, it's it's a yeah. way to connect to wildlife uh, and, and, you know, for others. Um, I love his work. It's very soulful. I think, you know, I've told him that. Um, so after you connected us, we looked at, all right, what can we do together? Um, and mm -hmm. that uh, um, you were seeing some of that active, that was uh, the first mural project we work on together, which was Esperanza Elementary School. And you can go see that uh, mural from the road. I think it's viewable from the road, right, Nadia? And yes. um, it's beautiful. We brought to Brad Rumble being the principal there and uh, uh, LA Audubon already had this incredible, um, you know, certif uh, certified sort of habitat garden that was this, beautiful habitat they had brought to this school. So it just seemed to be a natural extension to put this, this beautiful um, wildlife habitat. And again, we didn't dictate, mm -hmm. we let the school have an input into what wildlife they wanted Jonathan to paint. Mm -hmm. um, but the first thing we did with Jonathan, be, even before the mural was this, this is P56. Uh, for those of you who <laughs> Uh, are in the um, Save LA Cougars, you know, team, you know, P56 is actually kind of a tragic story. He was killed uh, legally, but uh, there was a lot of uproar about, uh, you know, legal doesn't make it right. And he was one of the, one of only, you know, two viable males in the Santa Monica mountains and was killed by uh, four for uh, predating on livestock. But of course there was a lot of question about, you know, well, don't we have a responsibility to protect our livestock? And indeed he became a mm -hmm. rallying cry and, and his death actually led to some good. Um, mm -hmm. They did change the laws about predation and and his uh, his death also led to something unprecedented, which was, I think, you know, the, uh, the final consideration of the Southern California mountain lions for a state endangered species listing. But, you know, it comes back mm -hmm. to this art here um, we use this as, you know, you can see it's, it's a really beautiful rendition of, uh, to honor P56 that we used in uh, the campaign at the time to try, you know, to, to get support for some of those initiatives I just mentioned. And mm -hmm. here you see uh, Tony's brought up here and we really want to thank Tony who makes it all Absolutely. run smoothly uh, behind the scenes. Um, uh but uh, he, uh, you know, Jonathan unveiled this. Jonathan also, and you know what? I'm going to do an impromptu. I didn't even know Johnny Boy did that. Um, Jonathan <laughs> yeah, yeah, also, Johnny Boy, by the way. What you're seeing, um, yep. he did a, 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 a free session for us uh, online as part of um, our online virtual series during the pandemic, How to Sketch P22. And I bought this from him, what he ended up doing. You can see what she's showing on screen now. Wow. I have framed and hanging in my home. So, uh, wow. you know, it was important to me to personally support, uh, you know, Jonathan as well. So um, it's just been an incredible relationship. And we're now looking at murals on the 101. And, you know, I joke with Jonathan that I just you know, I want a mural for every P, right? We're up to a hundred now. So, <laughs> you know, and I think we'll keep them busy. Um, but uh, Art of the Endangered is, is his website. And um, somebody asked where they could see, uh, Warren, what's the roads, Compton, and what's the cross street for the Watts mural? It's on Century and Compton Avenue. Okay, Century and Compton Avenue. You can go see it. It's 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 really something to see. I have to say, uh, I just actually got to see it in person for the first time since we painted it during the mm -hmm. pandemic. So, um, and, and I'm and I'm hoping I'm hoping somehow some way to to get it to show up on like Google Maps or something. I want people to oh, be able to right. find oh, it. Oh, Street View. 
Yeah, I, I can't. I can't believe it's find. not on. Not on Street View yet. Uh, so. we're, gonna, we're gonna get it going. Street View. I don't know if anybody on here is watching <laughs> this. You want it on there? Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. Century. And I mean, speaking on behalf of Jonathan, I wanted to see if I could share with his experience of painting the mural at, in Watts. Um, I remember the first couple of days, um, I think this might have been the second week when, you know, things started to sort of come into shape because the first couple of days is a lot of like, you know, why pain, you know, there's a lot of prep work. Yeah, this is kind of at the beginning stages, but I think he had already gotten a little bit ahead um, in the process where you where it was starting to take shape. And I think the story that stands out the most for me, although I know, Warren, you probably have some of your own when you were out there, but. Um, I wasn't there when this happened, but I remember Jonathan calling me one day and telling me that there was a couple um, who had pulled over one day out of nowhere and just handed him a 20, a $20 bill. And that the man said, you know, here's $20 for, for you to buy, you know, paint supplies. And I, I was like, first of all, this community is not, you know, they don't have just $20. Um, they're hardworking people. And I know that every dollar that they spend is hard earned, you know, hard earned money and, and life is tough these days. So I just thought it was so powerful for someone to not just pull over and say, thank you for what you're doing, which that happened too. And I'm sure Warren has a story or more stories, oh, but, but that this person like, felt so compelled and who knows why, like now I wish I had been there because I would have wanted to like, what compelled you to just hand this kid, you know, $20 and just kind of go on your way. Maybe, maybe he had wanted to be an artist one, day. you know, who knows what his background was. Right. But I just thought it was so, and I saw other people kind of would like come and, you know, want to see. And um, mm. it, it just is so awesome when you're there in person to see mm -hmm. how people respond to something that may be simple to us, you know, which is, you know, these beautiful colors, it's not simple, but something so, you know, easy, relatively easy to do, right? Find a wall and make it beautiful that yeah. someone would be so moved. Yeah. yeah I mean, Warren, what are your stories? I mean, I know you've told us some, but you know, how the community is responding either when he was painting it or now we'd love to hear him. Yeah. Well, this, well, this thing. Let me let me say this too. One thing that is not unique to any place is energy. So, when he's out there doing what he's doing, it's not just the fact that oh, he, he's painting. I wanted to be an artist, and something like that either. It's just like energy is real. And if you're putting out positive energy, I don't care what location you're in, it's going to bring positive energy. So I think people seen they felt that more than anything they felt the positive energy coming from it so one of the days i was going over there to meet him and my boy ben with big picture Anthony's, right um ben the day before was like you know what next time i see you lunch is on me lunch is on me so i'm going over there to meet him and johnny boy and when i get over there they look really happy first of all and i'm like they look happier than usual so what's going on? Come to find out because he's over there working on the mural. Oh, people then came and um, treated him to lunch. They um, <laughs> was bringing him waters, all this stuff like that. Uh, oh, I didn't know showing that. Showing them, all, yeah, showing them all this love, and I'm like, so are you still treating me to lunch? Because I just got here. <laughs> uh, so I, I missed out on that part, but they were just telling me how the whole day went. And it was just like love being shown throughout that whole time they were there. And, um, you know, people hunking the horns when, I, when I'm over there all the time. And some people, um, and we're talking about from different walks of life, like even, um, even some of the people that grew up in gang culture, like they would drive um, up when I'm over there, roll the window down and be like, man, this is what I love to see. And they'd be like, man, we appreciate that, that what you guys are doing is bringing beauty to the community. And there's people that, like, we probably wouldn't have had an interaction before. Like, they're literally pulling over, showing love, and even exchanging information with me. Like, hey, man, next time you guys having something dealing with this, let me know. 
So um, every time I'm over there, I seem to um, see that, right? And, um, yeah, I, like literally every time I'm over there, there's a new experience that come along with the mural. Beth had her own experience, and she ended up with a hat. I ended did. Up with a hat. We we were filming um, the launch of this. I was wild, which again, we'll, we'll leave some time at the end, Warren, for you to talk about, but um, it was God, two weeks ago, time just flows in. And while I was waiting for Warren and Nadia to show up, uh, there's a, this wonderful woman um, selling hats and flowers. And, you know, I was standing out in the sun and she walks over and, and gives me a hat. And, uh, and then I gave her some cougar swag. So we, we did a fair trade. Um, but, <laughs> Um, you By know, the I, way, I, I missed the hat too. I did a hat even, but listen. Yeah. <laughs> I missed I lunch and I missed a hat. Yeah, you miss you miss lunch and a hat. See, see Warren what happens. But what um, is wrong with me? Yeah, you, you know, so it's yeah, no, I think it, you know, to to your point, um, Warren, I think this is not unique to anywhere. People respond to, like you said, energy and positive yeah. energy and putting a work of art there becomes sort of a way, a commonality to connect, right? I mean, that's what I love about Absolutely. it. Is it, 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 um, it really does become a, a, a something to connect around that, uh, like you said, you may not normally have these connections. So that's, uh, yeah. and, you know, we hope to do a lot more in Watts, not just murals. Yeah. Uh, I know part of our commitment to Watts, which is for the long term, is gardens and and. Mm -hmm writer's workshops or whatever. I mean, I think that's one of the things, Nadia, when you talk about doing things a little differently, you know, for us, this is a long-term commitment. This isn't a, a one-off for the National Wildlife Federation. This is uh, something that through Jonathan's art, through Warren's music, through other partners, um, you know, and, and it's not about us telling what Watts needs. It's about asking, <laughs> right? Yeah, what, yeah, what, what can we do for you? You tell us and, and we'll, you know, we'll deliver. So anyway, uh, Catherine the Great likes to be on Zoom calls. So she's, um, she's, she's here, but um, hey. yeah. Um, and as you see, like I have on P22, now I'm from Watts and I'm yep. like literally wearing P22 shirts. Like I made my connection in one way and then we're making that happen for more people in that community in another right. way. And um, yep. one thing I like about all of this right here is that uh, kind of like what Nadia was touching on earlier, I, if you just continue to make your journey with your art or whatever it is, uh, and just connect with people and allow that to happen without, um, you know, having these um, prejudgments and, and biases in the way. You don't know what that's going to lead to later on. I didn't know that I was going to be doing work in the conservation community. I didn't know that. And now we're showing artists right now that um, there's a way to actually do exactly what you're doing right now. Whether you're painting, you're, you're rapping, you sing, um, even if you just, you're, you're cooking, there's so many ways that you can connect what you're doing to something positive that can help other people. Yeah. And that's something that I had to learn through, um, you know, allowing myself to be open to these new ideas and yeah. listening to um you guys talk more about your perspective and then me allowing me to have mine that's once exactly we had that, it. right yeah once we have that now now it's like okay now you can mm -hmm. see where we can do this together because we were open to each other's ideas and and thoughts yep. So, and Lauren, do you want to talk right now a little bit um, about If I Was Wild, uh, just how people can enter? And I mean, this is yeah. sort of a, a natural extension of what we're talking about. How do you use like Jonathan's exactly. art, which, you know, I mean, his intent, which we didn't focus on enough, is named Art of the Endangered. So, you know, a lot of what he's painting yeah. is to call attention to, you know, uh, threats to wildlife, to oppression, however you want to say it. Um, and Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, much like that, this If I Was Wild challenge that, uh, you know, the voice of Warren we are we are lifting up is um, doing the same thing. But you want to talk a little bit about that and tell people how they can enter Warren. And Absolutely. there's the website so, right there. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Absolutely. And as you can tell from the title, it's already um, a, it's kind of a way to show relatability. Um, 
between humans and wildlife? Like, what if I was wild? What, what in my life relates to wildlife, right? So I could, maybe I could tell my story through the perspective of wildlife. Um, so um, just for an example, like on my verse, when I say, do you look at a bird's feathers to decide if it deserved better? Is my skin color what you use to measure me? If I was a bird, I would fly just to find peace. Sometimes I watch them just to find me, right? So that line alone, like, you know, if you don't look at birds with, with the different feathers and say this one deserves better than the other, then why do we do that with each other? And that was just what I felt like getting off my chest through my art. And you can do the same with your art. So if you're an artist, whether you're a singer, writer, uh, a poet, a rapper, um, if you go to ifiwaswild.org, um, look through the information, download the beat, write your verse, and you upload it, and you tag us, you tag um, LA, um, what, what's the Instagram on there? It's P22 Mountain Lion, right? You, know, you tag them, and you tag Big Picture Anthems, use the hashtag if I was wild challenge. You're going to get a chance to win some good prizes, but also just help a large community of people and wildlife animals at the same time, right? And we're going to show the world that there isn't a separation between us. Everything is happening at the same time, and it matters at the same time, and we're going to fix all of these issues together, right? So, um, also... Just to add on to the prizes, the producer told me recently that whoever wins is going to be able to go on his page and pick out any beat that you want. And um, I see you, up, Beth. I, I, I see you right there when I say something. Do you want you want a beat? Is that what it is? I want a beat. I I I actually yeah, you heard that. Like I, you you wanted that beat. I was excited to read that. I heard that today. I mean, the prizes are a thousand dollars cash grand prize. You get your song professionally recorded, and you know, uh, and a music video of what you do. And to to have that added Absolutely. is incredible. Hey, I think Tony has your video queued up, Warren. Um, Tony, if I'm right, exactly. you want to play this, right? Let's hear the uh, the video yeah. about if I was wild. It's so great. Oh, we don't have volume. You can see it. <laughs> I don't know if we can hear it, Tony. There's, but there's no volume, Tony. But as you can see, uh, it's showing relatability. That's what it's showing. Yeah. Yep. And you can watch this video as well on um, the If I Was Wild website. There's a, a video that, um, and I think Tony's going to try again. Uh, a video that's about it, and then a um, video that talks about how um, how to enter. Rules are there, and how to enter. But it's a great way again to artivism, right? You know, that's kind of a new word. Um, how you can use your art, like Jonathan, like Warren, to you know fuel change. And I think that you know these are voices we want to hear from. And I'll tell you, some of the entries are really powerful. Absolutely. So um, you know, please check it out. It's it's a really great initiative. Um, Absolutely. The, um, let's see. All right, we got it now. How much wildlife and human life have in common? You'll be surprised to know that we're more similar than we are different. Our struggles, our wants, our needs, the way we express ourselves, the way we show love, our will to survive. These are some of the many things that connects us. What if you were able to give the world your story through the perspective of wildlife? Maybe then we all could see that you can't love one without loving the other. Because we are indeed nature, we are a part of wildlife, and wildlife is a part of us. Did you know that the role systems that we build for our benefit are actually responsible for over 1 million wildlife animal deaths per year? That means that a system that we set up for our convenience has become an inconvenience for another group and is becoming a danger to their existence. And if you think this sounds familiar, it's probably because this is the same as systematic oppression in our lives. Where there's a system set up to give an advantage to one group over another. And it's all based on gender, race, class, 
sexual orientation, even language. This campaign starts off with the If I Was Wild Challenge, open to artists all around the U.S., and will build up to the release of a national music video during the Urban Wildlife Week in October. This project is a collaboration between Save LA Cougars, National Wildlife Federation, Big Picture Anthems, and Third Rock Hip Hop. Stay tuned to the campaign by adding your email at ifiwaswild.com and are following along on social media at Third Rock Hip Hop and at Big Picture Anthems. This If I Was Wild challenge is here to give a new perspective and understanding and bring forth change for all of us. And maybe the next time you see one of our wildlife friends, you'll ask yourself, what if I was wild? It's really powerful stuff, Warren. And Ben, who's not on here from Big Picture Anthems, really thank you. It's it's really please get engaged with that campaign. It's it's awesome. Um, and just I I just can't wait to see all the the entries. Um, and we're getting on time here. A few comments. Um, P22 is actually here. Said Tony is backstage voting for a rap from Beth. I think I'll leave that to Warren. Uh, he's the musical talent. Um, but hey. Warren, you're um I'm the P22. Video. Uh, so Warren wrote a song about P22, which we now do a lot of talks together in the schools and use, but it's also just a great song. You can download it on the Third Rock Hip Hop site or iTunes or, uh, yeah. you know, pretty much anywhere you find music. But we will be releasing the video for that song soon, right? Is that not correct? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, that is correct. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple other comments. Rich uh, says, nice to see a new generation helping to protect and spread info through art. I agree, Rich. I went to a tattoo artist for a logo. Let it roll. Rich, hold my beer. I mean, yeah, we're talking <laughs> tattoos here, okay? I got to be, uh, and I also went to a young LA artist for this. Uh, Lewis, if you're out there, I'm, I just love carrying your art of P22 on my arm. This is my pretty much my first tattoo at age 44. Uh, so, um <laughs> I hear you. Like, however you express your art, I think is the point here. Um, uh, before we wrap up, I want to ask, this is a, a off-the-cuff question, so forgive me, Nadia and Warren, but um, what's the next mural you want Jonathan to do? <laughs> mm. Any ideas? Mm. I, I have, this is something I'll give, I'll give Warren a little more, more time to, to <laughs> answer, but this is something I've actually been thinking about um, for a little while, I guess. And I think, I think maybe once the wildlife crossing is underway, I'd love to see us do, this is off the cuff and I'm giving him, I'm giving, off the cuff. I'm, <laughs> I'm giving you my idea without like on a, on a live. That's okay. That's okay. That's the fun it of it. <laughs> I'm going to let it go. Um, I just think that, um, you know, back to Warren kind of touching on this earlier, but I think a lot of times living in LA, and this isn't just about people who live in a, you know, inner city like Watts, I think living in many parts of LA, uh, because it's so spread out, um, because it's such a city so packed with people, I think we forget how full of, you know, how much wildlife there is all around us. Mm -hmm. um, just all of us, even people who you would think, you know, um, should be maybe more connected because they've got more parks in their community. Um, we all deserve parks, but we also don't don't have them in, you know, it's not, it's not ever equal in that way either, right? But, I think it'd be great if Jonathan did a series of murals about, you know, depicting some of the great, some of the native wildlife in LA. Um, you know, and I don't know what that is because I'm not a biologist and I definitely am not an expert on native wildlife, but um, it would be so awesome to, you know, maybe get a snowy plover done somewhere near the beach and, or, you know, a butterfly or a moth even, or a bird. There's a bluebird in my neighborhood that I'm, I had to Google and look up and I even reached out to Mr. Rumble to see if he could help me ID the bird. Um, but I'd love to see Jonathan do something like that um, in some of the other sort of cities that are maybe detached from wildlife or detached from nature um, because of all the reasons we just explained um, that are happening in Watts. And just celebrate the wildlife that's that's in our you know communities, and maybe if they just see it, they'll they'll be on the lookout for it. And that's just one little touch point, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's what I would. That's a big dream, but who knows I if it'll it. happen? Well, Warren, you had plenty it's of time. Then Nadia saved you. You had plenty no, no, of time. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you know, because 
I mean, for me, it's like, okay, how many do you want me to, to mention? I mean, I want to see them all over the city, awesome. especially, especially because, you know, one thing I've, I've learned, and I actually learned this from my trip to Oakland. Like, the more they were putting up murals out in Oakland, the less they seen graffiti and things like that because people, you know, they admire what beauty was there now, right? So I would want to see it in many different places. Like, there was a there was a lady who had a, a daycare when I was over there by the mural, and she passed by, and she was Thank like, so um, she was asking me, like, yo, did you guys do this? And she was like, I would love something like this on my, like, the daycare that I have down the street. So, like, those times like that, I wish I could just be like, we'll do it. You know, cause, <laughs> yeah. because you don't want to, you don't want to have those people, like, lose that, that love that they just felt. So, um, you know, things like that. I want to, um, in certain areas, like, where the Mafundi building is, you know, I just want to. I, I wanted to kind of feel like there's like a wildlife story through these murals and lots. Like you said, yeah. some of the local um, um, wildlife. I want to be able to walk through the city and not feel like my inspiration going down because I'm going to another area. No, it needs to just keep going. Like we're, right now, we're doing these things on 100, like over there near like 102nd, right? But I also... My childhood home was on 112th in Wilmington over in that area. So, you know, I want to see it move down further and further and further. And next thing you know, there's like a whole wildlife story. And there's beauty when you just drive all the way down Wilmington or you, you drive all the way down Compton. Yeah, I want to see them do things like just let's just bring it all the way through there. Let's I'm make here. it happen. I, hey, listen, I think Jonathan will paint as many murals as we want. So uh, I <laughs> love it. And I love the idea. Of, yeah, I love the idea of a story, oh, too. Car. I mean, I think, you know, Nadia, you touch on something which was, again, a conversion for me. You know, I um, spent most of my career working in places like Yellowstone and Yosemite and urban wildlife. That was a that was a big change for me. Now I'm the, its biggest mm -hmm. advocate, both scientifically and socially. But um there is wildlife in cities and i think art is one way to remind people of that but you know you have coyotes in la you have you know when we're down in in uh watts warren i love that you know some of the the folks we hang up with love the possums they see or how many butterflies did we see right when uh yeah. when we were walking around there so i um i, I was know. just now trying to follow a butterfly like two days ago when i was over there yeah I was like, it's I've never, I, we feel like we've never seen it, but it's been there. It's, but yeah, yeah. they're there. So the I think it's, open for it. to me, the Watts mural is about, you know, I mean, there's monarchs in Watts. It's not that there isn't wildlife there, but it's reminding people it is there and reminding people also outside of Watts that, you know, wildlife and beauty exist everywhere. And again, sort of Absolutely. myth busting, you know, a lot of this, um, so again, uh, Jonathan, we're so sorry you can't be here. We'll have you back on, but my thanks to you. Your art is inspiring, um, and it's been such an incredible partnership for you to bring life to um, to these beautiful animals and in places that you know don't get to see a mountain lion or butterflies every day. Uh, Warren, uh, right back to you. Thank you for inspiring me as well, and you know our partnership and collaboration is just growing. I'm I'm so encouraged. Um, about what we're able to create together. And, uh, you know, it's mm. for the good of both wildlife and people, which is I like. And Nadia, too, God, couldn't do it without you. Your, you know, your perspective. Nadia. And yeah, just, you know, again, bringing another voice to our work uh, and connecting us with people like Jonathan's amazing. So uh, just, it we takes have a village. It takes, takes a village. village. We have a Na great. Nadia is my cousin. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It we takes really a village. We really and, are. We have a lot of musical tape. Remember, we were we were yeah. vibing on the '90s hip hop. Yeah, Yo, Nadia exactly. is my yep. cousin, man. If y'all believe me, mm -hmm. look it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Warren's my let's do things we haven't done before now thing. Like when I wanted to see the Brady Bunch home. So, um, but yeah, uh, yeah. and we have another. You know, we have an incredible team that you're not even seeing here um, on NWF. Uh, Tony behind the scenes uh, who yeah. makes it all happen. Uh, Karina's not here, but a uh, big shout out to her for putting together Cougars and Crossing yeah. Week, which I'm supposed to talk about before we go. 
Um, so again, thank you for being here all. Jonathan, um, really uh, sorry you couldn't be here, but we will get back to you, I promise. And uh, what's up next? So again, go to either P22's Facebook page, the event, go to savelliecougars.org. There's also go to the schedule. There's a lot coming up on Cougars and Crossing Week. One thing I did want to call out is our thanks to the Santa Monica Mountains Fund, a nonprofit that we partner with. Their hosting is part of Cougars and Crossing Week, uh, a Break the Poison Chain event. One other thing you might not be aware of, of our impact on wildlife, and you want to talk about a, a, you know, a system that is deadly to wildlife, um, is rat poison and rodenticides. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're looking at alternatives to that because it has a really, in a system wide, there are not a lot of wildlife in this state, and I'm guessing this country that does not have some exposure to this stuff. Mountain lions, especially, uh, we've had numerous cats die in the Santa Monica Mountains because of exposure to rat poison. So, mm -hmm. on Thursday, the Sama Fund is hosting Break the Poison Break the Poison Chain event, which will help you learn about the impacts and what options there are. And you will hear from groups doing really good work in this area, like Poison Free Malibu poison-free Agora, poison-free uh, Caneo, as well as Kathy Schoonmaker, uh, who does a lot of great wildlife education from the National Park Service. So tune in on Thursday, but check out the whole schedule. There's a lot going on. And thanks for being here today. Again, thank you, Warren. Thank you, Nadia. And thank you, Jonathan, who wasn't here, but was here. We were really talking about the power mm -hmm. of his art. So um, Johnny Boy. take care, everybody. And we'll see you at the next Cougar and Crossing event. That's right. Peace. Bye. Bye.